and then a one, a two, a how do you do? <laughs> Welcome to Mythical Kitchen, where dreams become food. Today we're making the chili dog upside down cake, and we've broken the recipe down into three easy steps so you can find the time codes for right there. I, d I don't know what to do with my hands. Is this okay? All right, so the chili dog upside down cake. We got a layer of hot dogs, we got a layer of perfect hot dog slop chili, and then we got a layer of cornbread that you're gonna unfurl like a pineapple upside down cake. Yeah, I know you're probably asking, why not just eat a chili dog? Why not just eat chili and cornbread? Because this is America, and it is your right to eat an upside down cake. USA, USA, you... it's pretty good though. All right, this is my world famous chili recipe. It has won approximately zero cook-offs so far. So we have our oil going in the pot and we're just waiting for that to heat up. And then we're gonna start with one of my favorite products in the world. This is pork chorizo. And my favorite part about it is when they wrap the tube, sometimes there's a little bit of raw pork just kind of hanging out of there. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna stab a hole in the tube. And my favorite part about it is that the top two ingredients are pork salivary glands and lymph nodes. Now you might see that as a negative. I see that as a positive. This is really delicious. It's gonna add a lot of great fat into your chili. And also you can just squeeze the meat right out of your tube. Great. So this is gonna form the base of your chili. I heard the audible groans from the peanut gallery. Shut up! That pan wasn't hot. So we got our chorizo almost cooking in there. One day it will be cooking. And boy, when it starts cooking, mmm, that's gonna be awesome. Uh, now you're gonna take ground beef. This is just 80-20. Got a little bit of fat in there, but there's also a lot of fat from the chorizo. And you want a lot of fat in your chili to really kind of round out all those spicy flavors and a little bit of acidity that you're gonna get from vinegar. It's gonna have a lot of really awesome, deep flavor from it because we're using this chorizo. And then we got a lot of great spices and a couple other secret little ingredients that I'll only let you know about. Just you. As far as steps go, it's really important. You see, we got a lot of ingredients not to keep track of. While the beef is cooking, I like to add my spices because they're actually gonna toast in that fat. So here we just have simple New Mexico chili powder. Then we got our paprika. And then we got, ooh, this is dark chocolate. This is a great thing to add to chili because it adds a lot of that deep flavor. And then you're just gonna get a little bit of that like, ooh, what's that in there? That little je ne sais quoi of your hot dog slop. Black pepper and cumin. Cumin's another one of those things that you just smell and you instantly know it's chili time, baby. And then salt. I like to salt pretty early on in this process because I like to salt to kind of get all up there in that meat. All right, so when the beef gets about almost all the way to fully cooked, you're gonna go ahead and take your diced onions. I like to cook beef before you add that because the onions could risk steaming and then you're not gonna get as much browning on your beef. And then poblano chilies. A lot of people put bell pepper in their chili recipe. Anytime I'd use bell pepper, I kinda just like to use poblano chilies because you just, I don't know, get a little bit of spice in there, a little bit of that green grassiness without that like real irony twang of a green bell pepper. And that is all toasting in that beef fat. We're gonna let this go down a little bit more and then we're gonna add some other secret flavor ingredients. That's not a secret, that's just garlic. We got our pan nice and hot. What I like to do, I like to make a little well inside the chili. And then what I'm gonna add is tomato paste. That was awesome. Right into the center of that. And then fish sauce. Fish sauce is a great way to add umami in depth to any dish that you want. Really awesome, it just adds that big old punch and then it kind of makes your uh, house smell like a Foot Locker. But to me, that just smells like flavor. So I walk into Foot Lockers and I'm immediately just like, I have a hot dog. <laughs> they're like, sir, where are your pants? And then we're gonna go ahead and just add some crushed tomato, just a little bit. You don't want this to be super, super tomato-y. You wanna let the spices really shine. And then chicken stock. And that's gonna get this all nice and soupy. Dang it. Oh, I went like 20 minutes without spilling something on the stove. All right, so that's nice and soupy. And then we're gonna add our navy beans. I like to use navy beans. Kidney beans for me, they get a really tough skin. So you're gonna bring the chili up to a boil, then you're gonna drop that heat to medium, let it simmer for about half an hour until all the veg has softened up. You want a nice soft veg, and then you're gonna add your cornstarch slurry, and it's really gonna tighten. We're doing roasted jalapeno cheddar cornbread. So what we have to do is roast our jalapenos. This is one of my favorite techniques that everyone should have in their back pocket. I also like to have hot sauce in my back pocket, just in case. You never know when you're gonna need it. You're just gonna trim the stems off because stems can catch fire under a broiler, as I, uh, in my entire apartment building who had to be evacuated, has found out. And we're gonna pop that right under the broiler. So to start the base of the cornbread, we have both all-purpose flour and cornmeal going in there. Cornmeal is gonna give it that signature texture and flavor, and the all-purpose flour is gonna give it some of that gluten to kind of bind it and make it bread. And then we have baking soda, baking powder. I switched those up, but it doesn't matter. No one has to know, except for I said it. And then salt. <laughs> and then we're just gonna whisk that together. And then for the wet ingredients, we have whole milk going in there. Some people do buttermilk and cornbread. Um, I'm not some people. And then we're gonna add our eggs. 
We got three eggs going in there, and then we're gonna get our cheese in there. <laughs> um, the proper method is you just hold the bowl, and eventually gravity will run its course. You take that and just manhandle your cheese. And then we're gonna take our wet ingredients and add it to the dry. And then we're gonna whisk this together, get a little bit of those muscly arms in there. Final ingredient is melted butter. I like to add melted butter once the full batter has been composed. The chilies have been roasting for about five minutes on each side, but every broiler is different. If you have electric or an actual gas flame, it's all gonna differ, but you want them a little bit blackened. Uh, so we're gonna go check on those. Also, uh, Mike Paisley's mom sewed these pot holders for me. So if Mike Paisley's mom hasn't sewed you any pot holders, sucks to suck. Yeah, those are looking nice and blackened. And so the key, is that gonna ruin the cutting board? Yeah, this is meant for a pot. Okay, so the key on this, you need a gallon Ziploc bag. And you're gonna take the roasted chilies, with all the blistered skin, and you're gonna throw them into your Ziploc bag. And then what's gonna happen is you're gonna seal up that Ziploc bag, you're gonna throw it in the freezer, and that's gonna create steam, which is actually going to help the skin slough right off. Is that a word, slough? Pop this in the freezer for about 10 minutes. Is it convincing that we have a freezer down here? <laughs> Oh, dang. <laughs> You're gonna go put these in the freezer for 10 minutes. <laughs> All right, so the chilies are now cold enough to work with, and uh, I had a spoon. Yeah, give me a second. Now what you're gonna do is take a spoon and you're just gonna scrape it gently at the flesh and you can see that the skin is gonna peel right off. Do I do it to Morgan? Yep. Morgan, are you interested in this personally? <laughs> You can see the pepper flesh, it's nice and cooked and has a little bit of that charred, roasty, toasty flavor on it. You can also use your hands, but then uh, it's gonna ruin everything you touch for the rest of the day. But if you don't have a romantic partner, then it doesn't matter. I like to eat butter with the skin on, chilies with the skin off. You know butter skin? Like when you get it in the store, it like comes out of the box and it's got the skin on it. I like to eat that because it adds texture, but for jalapenos, take the skin off because it can get bitter. This is it. So you're gonna get these nice fleshy strips of pepper and you're simply gonna dice these up and then you're gonna pop that Right in there, and then we're just gonna do all this, whisk it up, and then we're ready to get on to cake and upper chili cake. Chili and upper cake, chili. Dog and upper dog, ch dog child. So we're gonna take our can of uh, Pam Food Lube, and we're gonna spray down our entire pan here. What we also have, as I already lubed it up, so my hands are gone. So we have a circle of parchment paper. What I like to do is take that and put that on the bottom of my cake pan. So we're gonna take our hot dog, hot dogs, and then they're cut about to a half inch thickness. What we're gonna do is we're gonna arrange them all around our pan in like a beautiful floral pattern. Like, you know how hydrangeas bloom? Try and make it look like that. You guys think I can do this? Dang it. That wasn't it. Man. <laughs> it's gonna happen. Dude, perfect. All right, so we got our hot dogs all arranged in this beautiful flower pattern. Wow, look how elegant your hot dogs is. We're gonna take the chili and we're just gonna scoop that right on top. If you think about a pineapple upside down cake, you got your pineapples and then you got like your layer of flavor goo. Consider the chili your flavor goo. So that should seep in between all the crevices of the hot dog and then form a nice wet base. And then your cornbread's gonna, I'm not selling this dish well. You gotta just change your inflection. So chili's gonna seep in through all those beautiful hot dog crevices and it's gonna form a beautiful and nice wet base that's gonna perfume through your cornbread. If you just say it more enthusiastically, it's an awesome dish. And then we're gonna take the cornbread mixture and put that right atop the chili. All right, and then this is gonna go in the oven at 375 degrees for about 45 minutes or until you can put a chopstick in and remove it clean with no cornbread batter on it, but there might be some chili moisture. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put that in the oven. The upside down cake's been in the oven for about 45 minutes. So we're just gonna go ahead and remove this and put that right there. Now's the moment of truth. So we're gonna take our cake stand and we're gonna flip it on top of this. And then a one, a two, a how do you do? And now. Oh, holy H-E double hockey sticks. Look at that. We got one hot dog falling off, but otherwise this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. You got all the hot dogs baked into the chili. You see some of that moisture from the chili is actually evaporated. And so now the flavors are even getting more concentrated. All we gotta do is garnish this up. It's so stupid looking in the most beautiful way possible. We got mustard, we got jalapenos, and we got cheese. All beautiful chili dog toppings, all beautiful on this. So, uh oh, a little premature. And we're just gonna draw some nice cross hatches with our mustard. 
I worked as a cake decorator at Vaughn's for six months. Did you really? No, that's a lie. Sometimes I lie for attention. <laughs> that's not a lie. I right, so got our mustard cross hatched on there, and now we're just gonna grate a nice mound of cheese. Do it in a nice spiral fashion. Really let it pool in the middle. And now we're just gonna take jalapenos, decorate that around there. <laughs> I can't stop laughing. <laughs> At this cake, I love it so much. This is the greatest thing I've ever done in my life. All right, now the next step, we gotta eat this. We gotta go feed it to someone. This is the chili dog upside down cake. Shut up! All right, so now we get to cut into the cake and eat it, and I'm so excited. I really want to preserve that beautiful hot dog shingling that we worked so hard. And also, you know, I think the mustard pattern is pretty cool. Look at that. Oh wow, you can see like the chili created a beautiful goo layer. I don't know how you did it, you covered up every single carrot of you with that. Oh wow, look at that cake. You can't see that? That's crazy. All right, now we gotta taste it, which I am very excited for. I'm gonna go right for the corner. Whoa, that's slighty. <laughs> All the sensation of eating a chili dog, especially with the mustard, on top of the hot dog and the chili. So it like legitimately eats like a cake, but tastes like a chili dog. And also it's just an awesome cornbread recipe. That is unbelievably delicious. I gotta go feed my friends with a spark. Hey, what you doing? Oh God. <laughs> what is this? Do you want to eat my chili dog upside down cake? All right, so we have a cheddar and roasted jalapeno cornbread base. We have a chorizo chili top and hot dogs, cheese, jalapenos, and mustard. Okay. <laughs> I'm too proud of myself for this. Uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna get you the perfect bite. Sorry for touching it with my hands. Am I getting sporked right now? <laughs> you got sporked, bro! <laughs> how is it? Kevin, tell me how it is. Don't leave me hanging, Kevin. I don't know about this one, man. You don't know about it? <laughs> no. Why? Come on, man, how long have we been here together? You're two and a well, half Well, it doesn't years. mean I don't like you. Okay. I still like you. All right. I got an issue with the texture, man. Why? This texture is funky. Well, it's chili. It's steamed into the cornbread. It's supposed to be good? It's supposed to be good. I feel like if I was on the side of GMM, just being like, you yeah. suck. Look, man, you picked the wrong guy to get sport because I don't like hot dogs, for one. That's fine. Look, fine. I like you, man. I like you, too. So then what's the problem here? Why are we arguing? Well, I like my food. I consider the food an extension of me. My art is me, and I am my art. I'll tell you what. I am glad that I got sport. Good. We'll just leave it at that. You want to hug it out? Hug it out. And I'm glad that you're sporking around here on the Mythical Kitchen channel. Drop a comment, like, subscribe if you make this dish, which actually tastes good and Kevin is absolutely wrong. Hit us up at Mythical Kitchen with the hashtag dreams become food. I'll see you next time. You can cook up your own feast while wearing the Mythical Kitchen apron. Available now at mythical.com.